I've been working as a web developer for over six years now. I've learned a lot about what it takes to be a good developer, how to work well with other devs, and how to make this job really enjoyable. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you five things I wish I'd known when I got started that I think if you're in the early stages of your programming journey, you might find helpful to know. Six years into my coding journey, and I'm not even close to knowing everything there is to know about JavaScript, HTML, or CSS. I'm working with devs who have over 20 years programming experience, and they certainly don't know everything, although sometimes it feels like they do. As a junior, it can be pretty intimidating to come into a team with people with three, six, or 20 years experience and feel intimidated because it feels like they know everything and you don't know anything. Well, let me tell you, every single dev out there probably knows something that the next guy or girl doesn't know. Even as a junior, maybe you've just learned or studied a concept that somebody else has long forgotten. Which leads me into my second point. It's okay to say that you don't know. In fact, if you don't know something or how to do something, the worst thing you can do is pretend that you do know it. If you remember that nobody knows everything, then there is never any shame in admitting you don't understand something. The best colleagues and teammates are those that are humble, patient, helpful, and collaborative. Being open about your limitations usually results in a good teammate helping you understand and fill in your knowledge gap. People appreciate those that are honest about their experience and abilities and show a willingness to listen and learn from others. Just remember that it's up to you once someone has taken the time to show you and you've indicated that you now do understand to put what you've learned into practice and ensure that it's something that you understand as well as possible. You don't wanna keep asking the same questions or having your colleague explain the same thing to you over and over. Early on in my programming career, I would relish tackling a tricky programming task and could get carried away with the code I was writing. I would present it to my team having buried my head in it for two days, coming up with something really clever that I was sure they would be wowed by, only to have them pick it apart and ultimately ask me to start again, only make it simpler. The first problem here was that instead of discussing a potential approach to the code I was writing, I just got stuck in thinking I can work this out on my own. When I finally emerged with a solution, it was not the approach we would have decided upon as a team. The second problem was, yeah, I was trying to be too clever. I wasn't really considering whether or not this code was easy for my colleagues to read and follow, or whether it was easy for them to make changes and adjustments down the line if they needed to, or whether it was self-documenting enough. Sure, it might have been clever, but that's not really the aim of the game here. Some code does need to be complex, but often there might be a simpler, more straightforward approach to get you to where you need to go. The ultimate goal shouldn't be to make the code as impressive or as concise as possible, but it needs to be understandable, testable, and not brittle, so people can adjust it without it all falling apart. Before we go to point number four, if you're getting into programming or looking to level up your skills, you're probably looking for some great courses to take you there. In the description below, I put a link to Zero to Mastery, which is a course platform that I've used in the past, and they now have dozens of amazing courses to help you develop the skills you need to either get into programming or take your career to the next level. Check out the courses they have on offer by clicking the link you see in the description below. Point number four, you don't need to be good at everything. I work in a team of mostly senior front-end developers, and although we have all been hired to work on the same React app, we all have varied skill sets, likes, and dislikes. We have senior people that want nothing to do with the configuration of the app, like dealing with Webpack and the build, or our Apollo config. We have those that love dealing with UI and visual elements, and others that have no interest in that side of things. We have someone that prefers to just concentrate on a design system within the app and mostly stay away from building features. The point I'm getting at here is it's okay to like some aspects of web development and not others. If you're lucky enough, you'll find yourself a workplace that is happy for you to just focus on the elements of the job that you really enjoy. Back to my first point, nobody knows everything and a good team is one that consists of developers who are really good at different things. Together you should make a great team. Of course, this doesn't apply to every team, especially if you're in a smaller team where you don't have the luxury of deciding you don't like CSS or more engineering type tasks. But if you can get into a medium to large size dev team, then more likely than not, you can indicate the sort of work that you like to do and for the most part, stick to it. I would say though, try to be open to other type of work and not too steadfast in your denials. But once you've settled into the team and proven your worth, you should have the flexibility to focus on the type of work where you can be most productive. When I finished my 12 week intensive web development course at General Assembly and was looking for my first programming job, I was 36. I was conscious that although not the oldest, I was certainly one of the older people in my class. 
and was definitely feeling a little uncertain about how that would affect my chances of landing a job. It took me a few months, and after one promising interview at a small tech company, the hiring manager said to me, let's be honest, people your age are usually transitioning out of development roles and into management or business roles. So why don't you come work for me in a product role instead? Obviously, I turned him down, but that comment definitely knocked my confidence. Several years later, I've worked in a few dev teams, and let me tell you, what a load of shite that comment was. In my first programming job, age-wise, I was probably middle of the pack. There were some developers there with a number of years on me, and they had no intention of doing anything different. In my current role, where I'm six years older than I was back then, don't do the math on that one, please. I'm still surrounded by developers older than I am. I love coding. I've managed teams in the past and I've no intention of transitioning beyond programming into management or product. I find this job so much fun, as do many grey-haired contemporaries of mine. So if anyone ever tries to tell you that you're too old or there's an age limit to get into programming, tell them they obviously haven't a clue what they are talking about. So that's my list of five things I wish I'd known before I got into programming. If you find it useful, please like and subscribe and let YouTube know that I'm doing okay. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.